We're here at Sun and Fun. It's day number two and we're making a quick tour of the Paradise City area. There's the flight design CTLSI from uh, the company in Germany that's got so many of these flying in the USA. Here's the Thatcher. This is the CX-5 with the Revmaster VW conversion engine in it, although that engine conversion has gone through a lot of development and uh, is an 85 horsepower engine powering this two-seat tandem aircraft. Titan aircraft here displaying two aircraft. One is the orange one in the front, the Tornado, uh, sitting on some big tires there popular airplane with the light aircraft set and their other airplane which could hardly be more different is the T-51 not P-51 but T-51 which I believe is about a 70 percent scale P-51 Mustang replica done very nicely he sold a number of those retractable gear uh, although it could be made with a fixed gear for those that may want that but most people are going to want this pretty true to the original look Here's the Hyperlite. This is the two-seat variety from the Sorel brothers many years ago. This airplane's been around a long time. The two-seater version here. Pretty wide cockpit and uh, has some sprightly handling, we understand. Been a while since I've had a chance to fly one of those and that was a single-seater. So this is one that's still on the list. Here's a just aircraft. This looks like a Highlander, but it might be a Super Stole. Nope, it's a Super Stole. This is built or uh, displayed here by Wallen Aircraft, and they are one of a growing number of people that are offering builder assist, professional builder assist, which is permitted by FAA and which is going to become more committed, uh, more permitted by FAA. So there's a lot of people doing that kind of activity now, and a growing number helping people build their airplanes. Gyroplanes are big business in the light aircraft space these days. Here's another one from Tango Gyro with a Yamaha power plant on it. We've not seen that too often, but these gyroplanes are really attracting some business. A lot of people selling them. They're starting to show up big time on the registry. Now we're coming up on a sling, and here's another Builder Assist Center. This is Midwest Sky Sports. They do sell the airplane as well, but they feature that they will help you build the airplanes. And the uh, TSI, their new four-seater that's getting a lot of attention, is one of the ones that they help people build. Then we're going to make a pass by the LSA Mall, which is well populated again this year. You see an RV-9 back there, and yes, that one is registered as a light sport aircraft, an experimental light sport aircraft. Right in the foreground here, a beautiful used aircraft, several years old, but you can hardly tell it. That's a Breezer from Germany, a very nice flying airplane. I took one of those to the Bahamas once, enjoyed that. Next is a RANS S12 air rail, but it, this one's distinguished by having a 90 horsepower Viking engine on it. Behind that is the very, very light Zigolo from Aero Marine LSA. In, and uh, right in front of it, another one of their airplanes that's quite popular is the Merlin PSA. They've really started to sell some of these things. Very attractive price point, around $35,000. These numbers change, but it gets you in the ballpark anyway. A single seater, but a very sprightly performing one. Next up behind them is the Sundancer from Die Star Aviation. This is a motor glider, you can probably tell, and one way it distinguishes itself is by those big speed brakes on the on the wing there you see. Now we've got the Harmony Vector. Here's another used aircraft, but look at that thing. It's beautiful. We've got a number of used aircraft and uh, there's a growing number of those and they make for a highly affordable purchase. A couple of Jabiru's here. One new, one used, and uh, again, the used ones are factory. Uh, the representative for Jabiru in the country is the one that's restoring those and making sure they're just right. So that's a great place to purchase these things. And behind that is the Bristel and the blank space in between. We're looking for a Cub Crafters to come in. So the LSA Mall has a good population of aircraft. Coming up next, 
a whole line of aircraft from TL Aircraft, or TL Ultralight it's known in Europe, but in this country they're going by TL Aircraft USA. There's their just introduced stream passing by the camera right now. To the side of that is the Sting that people know very well. That's the S4 Sting, and behind it was the Sirius, their high wing model. This company's got two low wings and a high wing and something for everybody, it appears. Next up, another company that's really having a good run. It's the Aerolite 103 in bright colors, and they are at capacity. They're producing all they can produce and have orders pending. So this very, very well-priced aircraft is having quite a run of good sales activity. The company is based in the Delan, Florida airport. Okay, we're looking at the Hawk now. There's a two setup of Hawks here, CGS Aviation Hawk that is. The blue one that you see, that's a two-seater. That's being made by the Terry Short organization. And the yellow one that you see, which is the single place variety, is made by Bob Santum and his son LB. So while it's the same aircraft, two companies have split up the production in order to keep up with demand, they say. Coming out of the trailer there, another chipper model uh, is going to join the other one that's sitting out here. They've got a two-seater and a single-seater version of the chipper now. This company just keeps developing airplanes, and there's a new one we hadn't seen. All right, now we're coming up on the Pipistrel Cenus. Some people call it Sinus. That's just the way we pronounce it, but they call it Cenus. This is a motor glider. Look at the span on that thing. You can easily identify it. They've had quite a run with that particular style of airplane, over a thousand of them built now. The Cenus and the Virus family of aircraft from Pipistrel. And behind them is the very handsome, I've always liked the way this Ecolot Topaz looks. Got a pair of them in here. It's a sweet little airplane. They look kind of small, but that's because they sit low. They're actually quite roomy inside and very nicely finished. Coming up now, the SP-30 stole. Yes, it looks like another airplane you know, but it's a successful entry in the short takeoff and landing space. A lot of these have pretty good price points on them too, and they've proven to be a quite a popular aircraft for the originator Zenith, but there are others that are also capturing that market. Now we've got the Magnus and their Fusion 212, very sleek aircraft, all carbon fiber. We did a pilot report on this, so you can learn more about that when that's ready. Here's an RV-12. Now you know that aircraft, but if you look at the end numbers on it, 350UL, that stands for old UL power. This has got the four-cylinder, 130 horsepower UL power in there. That's a full FADEC engine, meaning it's all electronically controlled. Makes it easier on the pilot. UL power having a good run, starting to really get a good population of engines in this country. More gyroplanes coming up. This is the ELA from Spain. Uh, very handsome uh, gyroplane entry. We've got a whole family of aircraft, and we're coming on more gyroplanes. This one from a Florida original here. Not the only U.S.-based gyroplane, but a very successful one. They've got two open canopy aircraft here, but they also have a closed canopy version of this, which can be removed. They're having a good run out of the Zephyr Hills Airport and having good success at getting uh, aircraft out in the field. We expect to see more of those as time goes on. And coming up on a Rotax service center here. Rotax engines, the leading engine supplier in this space. Virtually all these aircraft we've just been going by are using Rotax power. That means they need a lot of service centers to help people keep those in good shape. Mike Thiecke and his Sky Cycle business did a real nice job of decorating their space here and their aircraft. They always have some of the nicest airbrush artwork on trikes that you'll just see anywhere. In fact, it's some of the nicest airbrush work on the field, I think. Lots of opportunity there. Powershoot, our leading supplier of powered parachutes. And they do more than just build these very handsome powered parachute carriages you see here, which they've got in several price points, all of them quite agreeable. You can afford one of these things probably. They also do some work for the Evolution Trikes Company because they've got machine work and tubing assembly that's just high quality stuff that those two companies got together on that. Here's the D-Motor, and this is a uh, popular airplane, uh, in, airplane engine out of Belgium. They've been developing this for some years, and it has good following in Europe. They're still working on things in the U.S. here, but it's good to see them displaying and showing their wares. 
Now we're coming up on the RANS display. Of course, everybody knows RANS, one of the more popular kit plane companies in the United States. Thousands of these things flying. Here's two examples of their outbound, one of them on tricycle gear, one of them on tail dragger gear. Some people think only tail draggers are appropriate, but you know, lots of folks have learned how to fly on tri gear, so it's good they're going both ways with it. Here comes the Kolb TriStar. This is Kolb Aircraft. Their single seat Firefly, which is the part 103 version, but this one's got nose wheel on it, you notice that? But you see it rolling on its tail dragger. You can fly this aircraft both ways, as a tail dragger or as a nose wheel. So for those of you that aren't sure about tail draggers, that might be a great choice. It's an excellent price point from a reliable, well-known company. Pretty much can't go wrong with a Kolb, in my opinion. Here we're seeing another Evector Harmony. Uh, they've got a new distributor down here in Florida now. Well, it's the same distributor in Pennsylvania, and he's going to run that operation, but also expand down here into Florida. The Evector series has had a lot of success in flight schools, probably as many as any other single entry in the light sports space doing flight instruction in these airplanes. Several of them have literally thousands of hours of flight instruction. And now look at all those trikes, all those colorful trikes. There is now four aircraft in the Evolution trike range. The Revo, the brilliant green one you see right up front. The purple one to the side there is the Revolt. They have the Rev Part 103 version and a brand new Rev X that we looked at earlier. You'll see more on that later. That one is a uh, high-powered 582 on a single-place trike, said to have wonderful performance. All the factory pilots that have flown it just can't wipe that grin off their face. Here's the Aeropilot L600. This has been a, getting a lot of attention. It's the one that looks a lot like a Cessna 182. Indeed it is. I think it's a 70 or 80 percent scale version of that, but in my opinion it actually flies better because it's very responsive handling. Won't carry quite as much, but in every other way it'll outdo the 182 if you ask me. Here's an aircraft coming up next now to the Tucano that I had a wonderful time flying out at the Copper State show earlier. That thing does look like a fighter aircraft and kind of felt like it inside too. I was very pleased with the flight characteristics on that Tucano from Flying Legends in Italy. Did a nice job with that. Next up is one of our most famous companies of all time. This is the Quicksilver aircraft, now represented in the United States and around the world by AirTech, which is one of the most reliable suppliers of parts and equipment for the Quicksilver aircraft. Beaver Born there giving you the passersby wave and his son Ken both waving back at us. Hello, fellas. We're having fun with those guys. They're always a lot of fun. They're out of Louisiana and they can supply everything you need for a Quicksilver. Now coming up on Bushcat, they've got a couple examples here, and again, they've got one in tricycle gear, and they've got one in tail draggers. So whatever way you want it, they can help supply it for you. This aircraft also has an excellent price point, so for those that are looking for affordable aircraft, Bushcat needs to be one of your decisions. You need to come and have a look at these airplanes, they're really nicely done, they fly beautifully and they won't cost you too much. Speaking of not costing you too much, the ICP, that's an Italian company represented in the United States here in Texas, uh, now you see it on floats. This is an aircraft that also has stole characteristics, short takeoff and landing characteristics, which should work very well on a float plane. And uh, we looked at this one for the first time, did a video interview with that, look for more on that later. Of course, you can't beat just aircraft. Their stoles, and now they've got one on floats. We hadn't seen this one before, so this is a new entry for us. Uh, but this is a company that a lot of people have come to like. They have an impressive performance envelope in these aircraft, oftentimes seen sitting on great big tires with big, long, extended shocks. That whole setup is an option to their other airplane, but the Super Stole, which puts it all together for you, has been a big success. They've sold a lot of those. They're all kit-built airplanes, but they have really attracted a strong market. We've got one here with 180 horsepower Titan on it. That thing just has to be seen to be believed. All that power and all that performance in the airframe, very exciting. Now coming up. 
M squared, one of our reliable companies, been in the business for many, many years, selling a lot of these things, but they've got two aircraft now in their fleet. Well, actually, they've got a whole series of these breezes, which is the red one you just saw. But beyond that, they've taken on a new task now. They do builder assist for the Zenith 750, helping people get these things all assembled and out the door a little quicker. For those people that don't feel like builders, they can help you. Paul Mather is the man behind this company, and he has a lot of knowledge to share with you. Oratex is a covering company, but the colors are already in the fabric. So that's an interesting thing because then you do not have to paint. And painting is a whole effort in and of itself. Anybody who's ever built a kit knows that. Oratex fabric might help make the difference, get it done a little quicker for you. Now our leading supplier of gyroplanes around the world and in the USA, here is Auto Gyro, their beautiful two-seat side-by-side Cavalon in, in blue and white sitting right out in front of you. Just beyond that is their M20 open cockpit aircraft. They showed that here a couple of years ago. That's one of their biggest sellers, been around a long time before they started doing the enclosed versions. Here's the Hearth engine display. Matt Dander, the man uh, with his hand on the engine back there, he's a proprietor. They have a whole range of engines, been in the business for a long time, and lots of aircraft go aloft with a Hearth on the front or the back. There's Matt waving back at us. Coming up next now, a Florida supplier of trikes on floats, and they have really specialized on this. The yellow one you see there that says Explorer 103 on it, that's a literally Part 103 aircraft. And yes, they can you can fly that without a license uh, because floats are given a little extra allowance in the Part 103 rule. Here's their two-place model uh, just beyond that. And this company does both the floats and the aircraft right here in uh, the Pensacola area of Florida, up on what's sometimes called the Panhandle. Next, after that, Aeropract, another company having a nice run. The orange one you see on your left there is the A32 Vixen, which we did a full pilot report on. People seem to like that. And the A22 LS, which has been their mainstay for a long time. Lots of folks look at this aircraft, this particular one, the A22, and say, my goodness, it's the airplane with all that glass on it. And it has a visibility like you can't believe in that thing. So that's kind of fun. Next up. Aviator Paramotor is a company that one of several companies that does these paramotors, meaning uh, an engine you strap on your back and a paraglider wing above you. They've also got them on wheeled carriages, so for those of us that may not want to run our landings out, it doesn't take a lot of running steps, but it does take some, and if you don't want that, they've got wheeled carriages for you. Here we're coming by the Rotax display. They've got a wonderful location here right inside the main gate. And that seems appropriate for the engine company that powers more light aircraft around the world, not just in the U.S., than any other engine producer. The first one you saw there was their test bed on the Sea Ray that has a lot to do with the single lever control development that's so interesting. And of course they always like to have a couple of aircraft in front of their display with their engines on them and you see people looking them over carefully. Rotax 912, 9 series engines and more. And here we've got one that is the newest of the Rotax line, the 915 IS, 135 horsepower, with a little more boost than that even for the initial run, but that engine is starting to attract a good audience. Now we're coming up on the Bristol aircraft display, and there's more than just Bristols in this space. They've got the Air Aventura S-17, which they're also representing. That's a float plane being built in Deland, Florida and having a good run itself over many years, but uh, new ownership has really brought new life to that company and they're doing some exciting things. You'll hear more about them later. Now coming up, one of our best sellers from 2018 is the very handsome Bristol from BRM Aero in the Czech Republic. And you see all the people standing around looking at that airplane. It just shows you that this aircraft has attracted a strong audience and they logged a whole bunch of sales last year. So we expect them to do well in this new year of 2019.
now you're looking at the lightning bug. This is a very unique aircraft. We did a whole interview with its designer, a gentleman named Brian Austin, a young up-and-coming engineer and pilot that we were expecting so many good things from. Very, very sadly, I have to report that Brian Austin succumbed to illness and passed away last year, but this is a very cool little airplane which he built for a total sum including engines and everything of just three thousand dollars for that entire aircraft you see there quite amazing so sad to lose a young man in the dawn of his career basically a young child and a wife left behind but he did some marvelous work that attracted a huge amount of attention it looks like it's getting more attention here so so long Brian but you did some great work that we're still observing good for you and now we come to the Aero East Discovery 600 uh, made in Europe but now being sold here in America where it will be represented by Americans it's a very handsome little airplane with some nice short takeoff and landing characteristics. Represented by Aero East, you can find them at AeroEastUSA.com. Now we've come to Continental, what I know is Continental Motors, but they've changed names recently, as you see there on their signage all over the place. They're Continental Aerospace Technologies now, but it's the same reliable company you've come to know for many years. And they are the representatives, you've just seen it right there, pass by of the Titan engine line. They have acquired that and they are giving people good support with that big powerful engine that some of our light sport aircraft makers are loving. Next up is the Super Patrol. That's the Super Patrol LS, standing for light sport. It's a bi-winged amphibious boat hulled seaplane. There's kind of a mouthful, but it's a nice flying airplane. I've been up in the air in that and it is a sweetheart. Here is the C-Max, one of my favorite little airplanes, and the man behind C-Max you see and just pulled away from us right there. That's Miguel Rosario, the designer of this handsome little airplane called the M22 C-Max. It's a performance light sport aircraft seaplane. One of our leaders in the light sport aircraft marketplace is the Sport Cruiser you're seeing right here. Nice big display for these folks. They've sold a lot of airplanes over the years and continuing to have a good success. This was once known for a short while as the Piper Sport, but all along it was the Sport Cruiser from Czech Sport Aircraft in the Czech Republic. Coming up next now, the Aero Trek. They've got a whole assembly of aircraft here. These are available in tricycle gear as the A240 they call it. They're available in, tri in tail dragger gear as the A220. And you'll see in a moment they do have folding wings on one back there around the corner. And their attractive corner display they've got here at Sun and Fun. And there it is with the wings folded back. That goes in that red trailer right behind the aircraft and fits in there just very nicely. So you can have both a hangar and an airplane. And they can supply both of those to you if you want. Catching more of our aircraft in the main core area, they call it here. Here's the Vans RV-12. This one with the 912 IS engine on it, a recent offering. That company is having a, quite a run of success with that airplane, joining their RV fleet of all kinds of airplanes with that same delineation. And some of those, even an RV-9, can be built to fit within the sport pilot space if you're careful about it. It's a little challenging, but they can do it. Now coming up, uh, we've got the folks from Sonics. They make a very inexpensive aircraft here in a variety of configurations. You see a couple of them there. The yellow one that you saw was a jet-powered aircraft, the Subsonics. Now they're all doing B models, they call it. That means it was a kind of a generation two effect uh, where they made a lot of changes to the aircraft. Nice job on those folks. Right after that, we've got the Panther. This aircraft can do aerobatics, and it looks like a hot flying little machine. And they've got varieties of that aircraft and different engines you can pick for it. The Panther from Sport Pilot Performance. Sport Performance Aviation is the name of their company. Now we're coming by the BD Aircraft Space, where they have uh, aircraft that fit in the experimental aircraft amateur built category, but also they've got ones that can be like this BD-6 there that actually can fit within the light sport space to the extent that a sport pilot certificate can fly that aircraft. Now we're coming by another one of our success stories in the light aircraft space. They have certified aircraft. That's not been our focus, although the company sells those too. But there is a Carbon Cub, and a Carbon Cub FX specifically sitting on some amphibious floats there. Just beyond it, the one you see more often is the T-51 
tail dragger version of the Carbon Cub. They were one of the first to use a high powered 180 horsepower engine and that bought them a lot of new customers. They're having a good run. Okay. You saw floats there on the Cubcrafters airplane. One of the sources for floats is this company here. It was a Canadian company a while ago. It's called Claymar and they do a nice job with their float system. They are now located in Maine. They've moved to a new facility or sold out to another company that is located there in a fine facility I visited making those nice Claymar floats. It goes on a lot of different airplanes. You have to ask them exactly which ones but they might be able to help you out. The next one you're going to see is the Sling TSI, and this particular aircraft here you may have noticed is the one that flew from Southern California to Lakeland, Florida, non-stop. And you know what? That's not even a long flight for those guys. Now that was about a 12-hour flight. They averaged like 160 knots, which is pretty speedy. But that airplane, or ones like it from that company, have flown all the way around the world, not once, not twice, but three times. Those guys love to go the distance. Here's one of our favorite companies, Duke Props. They uh, were unknown in this country just a few years ago, and now everybody knows about them. They do a great job of marketing, and they have a U.S. facility now. We got to go to their opening party at Sebring just a couple of months ago. They are operating out of the Sebring Airport now to give the best possible service to American buyers who are growing in numbers on a daily basis, it seems. Coming up next, Viking Aircraft Engines. These folks are using engines that are based on the Honda engines, engines that everybody knows are reliable and powerful, and they have done quite a job of making a whole variety of air uh, engines that go on different kinds of airplanes. Here you're seeing it on a uh, Zenith Super Duty 750, CH750, with, of course, a Viking engine on the front, and they've got, as you see, all kinds of Viking engines there. Okay, next up is an interesting, well, it's an engine company, it looks like, but this particular airplane right here, that is a P-36, it's called. It was the predecessor to the P-40, but it was one that used a radial engine, so that made a logical thing for them. And they have built that airplane you're looking at. Uh, it's a scratch design. They're going to make kits on it, but that one is the first of its kind that you're seeing there. Pretty fun, but they're going to strap a radial roadie, uh, burner, burner engine on the front of it. Now we're coming up to a company we all know very well. This is Arian Lightning, Arian Aircraft, and Lightning is the name of their aircraft. This particular one is the Lightning XS, and it again has that Continental Aerospace Titan 180 horsepower engine on it. Makes that thing just smoke 160 knots. That's about 180 miles an hour in that airplane, and it climbs, get this, 2,000 feet a minute. Pretty impressive airplane. Just beyond that, our friends at Jabiru, represented by a new company now, U.S. Sport Aviation, or U.S. Sport Planes, excuse me, and that is the Jabiru 250D model. That's their latest and newest model with all the right features on it, just gleaming back at you. It's the Jabiru. You can find them at jabirulsa.com. One of the things we're blessed with in the light sport and sport pilot kit space is engines. And we've got auto conversion engines that have been gone through very carefully. Here's another one. These are based on the Suzuki engine. This is Aero Momentum. And they have a variety of engines as well and at least two different sizes. You can see how they look there on a Zenith 701. Pretty nice clean installation based on all that modern auto technology that we know, but gone over thoroughly to work for an aircraft. Okay, we recently went by another radial engine from Werner. Here's some ones from another company that's been at it quite a while. This is Rotec. Not Rotax, but Rotec. And they've got a series of radial engines in different horsepowers, 110, 150, and more than that, too. Plus, they've got good support and some custom hardware that they make so that that engine works great on light aircraft. Now coming up on a new one in the space, but a new one that's made quite a splash. This is the Vashon Aircraft Ranger from way out in Washington State. Made, made a long flight down here in a couple of these airplanes. This is an all-metal airplane. And one thing that distinguishes this aircraft particularly is that those nicely painted aluminum skins you see are painted before they are assembled onto the airplane. That's an unusual process. Saves the builder some work and time, and they just have to be a little bit careful with them as they assemble them. Okay, there's the American Legend. They've moved a bunch of airplanes into that little tight space there, but that's because they're trying to show off all the different models that they've got. 
and a variety of engines they've got. And they've got kits, and they've got fully built. American Legend is one of our leading suppliers in the light sports space, having a pretty good run out of Sulphur Springs, Texas, American Legend. AmericanLegend.com is their web address. So here's Southeastern University. We always love when people learn how to fly aircraft and we're glad to support them, but they are using, look at this, it's a Technum P-28, one of the prettiest airplanes I think in the light sports space. Well, I'm a high wing guy, so I like that one. But Technum is definitely one of our leading companies, perhaps the most productive company in the light space. One of the companies that supports all the shows that we love to go to is that STEMI you, you see there from the STEMI company. Uh, they are a glider company, or more specifically, a motor glider company. Some beautiful pieces of equipment. They're kind of expensive, but you get a lot of airplane for your money. Literally a lot, not only in performance, but in sheer span alone. If you measure that aircraft dollars per span, it's probably a pretty darn good deal. Now we're coming up on the air cam space. And look at once again, they've got one, two, three, four air cams in this space. We like to look at them, they're not a light sport aircraft and they're not even something that a sport pilot can fly because you have to have a twin rating and they're too heavy to fit in the space. But they fly like an ultralight or like a drifter, which is the predecessor to this airplane actually. Air cam, and they've got a new engine package that's attracting a lot of attention called the Big Bore Kit that makes 115 horsepower from the Rotax 912 ULS, the Lockwood aircraft. Next up, Zenith, one of our largest producers in the whole LSA sport pilot kit space. They have three particular aircraft that they really promote. They are the 750, which also has the 701, and both are still available. They have the cruiser version, which is a little faster version of the one you're looking at right here. That happens to be the CH-750 Stoll airplane, short takeoff and landing. You'll see the cruiser next. Behind it there, though, is the CH-650. So they've got both high wing and low wing all made out of metal, nose to tail, and they embrace many different engines for these experimental amateur built. There's the CH-750 Cruiser. That one's almost the same airplane, but without all the stole features on it that makes it a little faster in, well, what would you think? Cruise. And now we've got Technum. We mentioned them earlier with regard to the Flight Academy. Let's see how many airplanes they've got in there. The P-92 Eaglet, the one you see in the front, that's got over 25 years of experience. There's thousands of those flying. Behind it there are the twin, they call it. Uh, two Rotax engines on a certified aircraft. Up front there is their very beautiful Astore. Behind that is the P-2000, excuse me, that's the P-2010, their certified four-seater. And in the front here now, the darker blue you see right in the background, is the light sport model, the 2008, that I think is one of the shapeliest airplanes in the space. And immediately beside them, one of our favorite companies, been in this space a long, long time, it's the Sea Ray. And that one you're looking at right now, that one is on loan to the Seaplane Pilots Association for about a year so that they can gain more familiarity with this particular type of aviation. They've done a lot of certified float planes and seaplanes for a long time. Now they are looking into the Sea Ray and they are using that and uh, promoting it widely. And uh, we expect to see more of that and we're glad they're doing it. But Sea Ray, one of our leading companies, available in kits, available in special light sport aircraft, and selling all around the world in pretty good numbers. We got a lot of great airplanes in the light sport and sport pilot kit space, that's for sure, but one thing everybody's got to know is which way is the wind blowing? Well, today, not any direction so much, but there's the guy that can supply your needs. His uh, company name is Windsock, and he has got Windsocks. Big ones, small ones, giant ones, little ones, and he makes them for all kinds of people get these things, and look how colorful they are, too. His new, wind, his new uh, web address is prowindsock.com. And that's Bruce Hawk, the main proprietor. He has been doing this for, well, a few years, and he's doing great. He'll probably look at us and smile in just a moment. No, he's looking somewhere else. There he goes. There's that guy waving. And that big smile, I promised you. Bruce Hawk of Windsock. So as we wrap up our display here, we're going by the big volunteer tent. These are the people that do all the organization out here. Thank you to all the Paradise City volunteers. They're giving pilot briefings back in that secondary tent. 
the first row tent up here welcomes everybody to the space and they're always a very welcoming crowd and we end up our little tour of Paradise City with one of the absolute originals in this space this is the absolutely original John Moody sometimes called the father of ultralights and there he is in a red shirt probably signing autographs like he does a lot his aircraft is still flying and he is still flying and it's always fun to see John go up in the air and show us how it all began many many years ago so there's our tour Paradise City hope you enjoyed it I think we hit just about every aircraft in the space and more to come find more from Johnson.com thanks for joining us here at Sun and Fun in Paradise City on a bright sunny day